In this video, we're going to take the Hantec 1008C automotive oscilloscope and load it up with some automotive signals. And make sure you head over to mechanicmindset.com to check out our oscilloscope training offer. There's lots of lessons to be learned and an amazing community to get involved in. So this thing has got eight channels all together, so six on the front and two on the back. And what we're going to do is load them all up and see how it handles them all, kind of like a game of Bookaroo. Specification wise, it comes with 12 bits of vertical resolution, which is really quite important for um, taking automotive uh, measurements. Sample rate wise for the 1008C, it's pretty low, so it comes in at 2.4 mega samples. However, every time you connect up a channel, that sample rate is shared between all the active channels. So to put that into perspective, if we're using all eight channels, that means each channel has a sample rate of around 300,000 samples, which is quite low. But let's connect it all up and see how it handles. OK, so we'll start up the oscilloscope into oscilloscope mode. And we're currently set up for 50 microseconds. So I'm going to increase that a bit and go for, say, 10 milliseconds. We can see that all eight channels are currently active. So what I'm going to do is just connect up the signals one by one and we'll see how it uh, reacts. OK, so there's our first signal. We've got a crankshaft signal. I'm just going to increase the voltage on that. And we can see already that the sample rate isn't fantastic. We've got kind of sloped uh, sides there. If we just reduce that time, it should help it out a bit better and actually spread that sample rate across a lower um, time base. You can see there that now we've got a, you know, a bit of a better vertical line there. Camshaft sensor. Got a wheel speed sensor. It's just a generic PWM signal there on channel 4. So let's just bring the channel 4 voltage down a bit. Got an AC signal then on channel 5. Frequency signal on channel 6. We'll do a throttle pedal signal on channel 7. You can see channel 7 here. We're going up and down. And then for channel 8, we'll connect up this attenuator and go for an injector signal. OK, so let's move the trigger to channel 8. So we're going to the trigger setup menu and change that to channel 8. So there is really quite a lot going on on this screen at the minute. However, it is kind of picking it all up. But, you know, um, it's pretty good, you know, it's, it's picked it all up. It's a bit of a mess over here, though. To put this thing really under pressure, I think what we need to do is really kind of stretch its abilities. Now, for most automotive tests, it's a good idea to take the uh, measurement over a longer period of time and then zoom in after. So let's um, change the time capture um, to something like 200 milliseconds, which is, you know, kind of normal for, um, you know, a longer term measurement and zoom in and then see what everything looks like. OK, so it's really kind of slowed down now. It's not enjoying this at all. I've got to 100 milliseconds. We're going to try going up to 200 milliseconds and see if it takes it. OK, I think we have got something there. Let's just let's just stop it there and, and see what we've got. So you can actually see down the bottom here, we've kind of completely lost our injector signal completely. We've just got these little spikes. So that's a good indication of that low sample rate. The spikes that we can see, it seems that it just so happened at that point in time, there was activity, whether it be, you know, the, the spike or the activation, we can see this spike here in these lower activations here, that it actually just caught that little bit of information. Now, there is quite a lot going on on this screen. Um, it's quite busy, but let's just see if we can zoom in and make any sense of what we've got on here. Now, if you've opened up Handtech for the first time like this, um, you might have a toolbar missing. So what you need to go is in, into the three dots, um, go into View and View Toolbar. What we can then do is open the Zoom menu. And then we can just click where we want to zoom. So we're zooming in there. And really, we've lost a lot of the definition on the signals that we were looking at. 
However, let's see if I can get it back by turning off the rest of those channels and running with one channel on its own. Now what we have to do is go through these channels individually and turn them off. And we're left with just that crankshaft signal there. So if we just remember what this waveform looked like on its own, let's just zoom in again and we can see that it's just basically a load of triangles. Go back to 200 milliseconds and let's run the scope again. Okay, so this looks a little bit different. Let's uh, stop it there and zoom in. Okay, so that is better. We can see our TDC reference mark. However, you know, the, the other bits there, they're not as square as we might like them to be. We can still see we've got that kind of triangulation going on where we've got a low sample rate. So in summary, really, it's... Um, it's a good scope to start with, however, if you really want to put it under some pressure and start measuring uh, your waveforms under a longer time base, then it really is going to struggle. So as this is such a popular oscilloscope, I think I'm going to do some more comparisons in the future with the other cheaper options that you might be looking at against the 6022BE and the 2204A.